there, this is Jen Grice from JenGrice.com. I am a Christian divorce mentor and an empowerment coach. And today I want to talk about um, child custody. This is a question I get asked often um, on my blog and recently here on YouTube. Um, I wanted to share how I created a child custody binder and how you can right. use um, child custody printables to help you create a binder. But first I need to say I am not a lawyer and I have no legal training, but I have been in custody battles many times in court myself, uh, fighting, fighting over a child, unfortunately, um, because fighting for the child is, is ultimately what is happening when somebody keeps taking you back to court um, asking for custody. So when you're fighting for custody, for the narcissist, um, he's in constant competition with you and everybody else in the world. And so, of course, he's going to take you back to court um, and file for custody to win. Plus, at the same time, this helps him to hurt you in the process. So an abuser uses the court system to continue to abuse you which is just having power and control. A, an abuser has to have power and control over everything, and when they don't get their way, they will use whatever means, um, including the legal system, to continue to have that power and control over everything. And also, a narcissist thinks that their children are property, especially if they pay child support. They think, I have a right to this child. I have a right to make decisions. I have a right to... Um, do this or that with my child or for my child or uh, take this away from my child. Um, it's not about what's actually good for the child. It's just about that control of, the, of that ownership um, that he has because he's paying for the child. He doesn't see the child as, you know, this is what the child needs. The child needs money to live. The child needs, you know, love and nurture from both parents. Um, no, he just thinks, um, I want to win uh, custody at all costs um, because I own this child. He's an ex he or she is an extension of me, and so I have that right. Even if they haven't earned that right, if, even if they're a bad parent or neglectful, maybe they don't even pay child support. Some still think that because that's their blood, that, that they own that child. So when you're facing that, that's really hard to deal with. And you, you want to come up with the best defense possible against these abuse tactics and this control that he's trying to have over the child. And the best defense is always the truth. If you allow uh, the court to see that this is what's going on, um, it does take time, maybe lots of years, and maybe not even while the child is um, in the court system. But eventually the truth always comes out. And if the narcissist lies habitually, eventually the, the truth comes out and the lies are revealed because lies always catch up to a person. And the other defense is to show the pattern, show the pattern of behavior, the pattern that shows that he really doesn't care about the child, the pattern that shows he's just fighting to win and uh, to compete or to hurt you. And it's not just about saying that's what you feel is going on. It's about showing that that is actually what is happening in the relationship between you and him and the child. There could also be a pattern of contempt of court with missing days, showing up late, uh, making excuses, uh, all sorts of things that goes against what the court order says that they're supposed to be doing. That's really what the court wants. They want you to either decide on something between you that you're going to agree to and put that as an order, or they will assign uh, a decision and that'll be the court order. And the whole point is they want both parties to stick to that court order. And when one or both parties don't stick to the court order, then there's contempt of court. So you want to get to the point where you're documenting that pattern, but you're not participating in that pattern with him. So in order to do that, you need to keep a journal of objective situations that have happened or times where there has been contempt of court. You want to document anything that may be relevant to the court or the court might deem as important for them to know. 
And of course, this always comes down to what's best for the child. The court wants to uh, wants the child to have the best possible, healthiest home that they could have. So most courts, at least here in America, and maybe in other countries too, the courts will have what's called a best interest guidelines and what they kind of look for in what it, which is the best parent for the child. And it's, again, it's not a competition of who's being better. It's, it's about being healthy. And that's why I talk a lot about being healthy on my blog and, and here on YouTube is to get emotionally healthy because the healthiest environment you can create for your child is what's in their best interest. And lastly, as far as, um, you know, child custody and, you know, gaining child custody or um, keeping child custody is to really be honest with yourself. Really be honest with what things that you need to work on and be actively working on them. If anything, you can tell the court that, hey, in the past, I may not have been great at this, but I am definitely working on it. I'm going to parenting classes or, um, you know, anger management or whatever it is that you need to work on. If you're showing that you're working on it, that is a huge, huge deal to the court. They see that as this parent is really trying rather than the other parent who is just saying, well, I pay child support, so I want the child, period. That's what it comes down to is that you have to know what the court is looking for in the parent and be that parent. Um, and it, like I said, again, it's not about competition. It's about just rising above all that you've been through to be the best parent you can be for the child and love the child as best you can. So why is it that you need a custody binder? And I will show you my custody binder. Uh, luckily, I have not had to use this one. I do have another one that I have used in the past. Um, and uh, early on, I did not have a custody binder. And there was many times when I went to court um, for custody hearings. And I, I was very prepared. That was evident um, with the outcome of me constantly winning the custody. Um, but I could have been better prepared. And that's why I've created this custody binder. I used the sheets that you can find on my website, jengrice.com forward slash shop and scroll down. There's just the custody binder or you can buy them as a set with the divorce survival and the single mom toolkits. So they're just printable toolkits with uh, about 25 page pages each. Um, and the child custody binder you know, comes with you know, the front cover. And if you don't want it to say uh, child custody, you can just use the butterfly tree and or nothing at all. And it just helps you to collect all the important uh, phone numbers and email addresses and uh, court appearances when you went to court, um, rulings and a follow-up note. So first, when you're creating your binder, I'll start there, you want to collect all the court orders. Everything that you have, um, you know, paperwork that you've gotten from your lawyer or you've filed uh, on your own or whatever, or you've been sent in the mail and you keep it all together. And that's why mine is nice and thick. You see, I've got mine. And before you obviously get started and print everything, you want to get some of these tabs so that you can divide things um, and keep things organized in the tabs. You can either use um, a hole punch or you can get the page protectors, the clear page protectors, and put things in page protectors. It does take a lot of time, so I use a hole punch and just go ahead and punch a hole in everything and just put it in my binder. So after you've collected your court orders um, and figure out which is the most important to keep, um, you, if you have like a final court order, you can make a copy of it um, or you can use the original if you'd like. If you know you're going to need to make copies of it, then go ahead and uh, for something else, you know, like for the school or something, then go ahead and um, 
make another copy for your record, and then you want to highlight anything important that so that you know where it's at. And I also have um, agreement location, so that's why you want to highlight. So you want to tell like what the document title is, what court order, and what page it's on, so you know where to find it at any given time. Obviously, you don't need my toolkit, but it definitely is helpful to have all those sheets done for you so that you don't have to do it yourself. But if you feel that you can just type that up and do it yourself, that's fine too. So you want to collect all the documentation that you need for, you know, um, courts or anything that you've written down, notes, um, you know, parenting time. Obviously, that would be something that you'd highlight you know, when his time is, when your time is, and that sort of thing, so that you have that um, readily available if need to. Um, also in my binder, uh, or my toolkit, and my binder. Um, obviously, if my children are much older now and can talk for themselves, but if there's ever a time that you can't, they can't talk for themselves, especially when they're little, and they uh, can't, tell dad when they have their last meal. Then you can use this sheet that I've created, uh, has medication, naps, and meals, and any notes on the bottom, so that you could just make a copy of it and hand it off with the child to say, here, here's um, the notes that you need for today. So it makes parent-to-parent -parent transitions much easier. Um, also in my uh, toolkit is, you know, a yearly thing, so you can highlight which days. And then also to go along with your documentation is a missed visitation makeup time. So you can make a note of, you know, for court, this is definitely something usable in court and stuff. If you have it written down, that is, has more weight with the court than just going off the top of your head. So I suggest documenting all of that. So, and then you can also track child support. Um, now in my state, child support and visitation have nothing to do with each other. So if he doesn't pay, he still gets to see the child. But if you feel that you need to track it for some reason, I have a tracker in here for courts and then a reimbursement tracker as well. So if, you know, when you pay for those braces or those glasses and then he reimburses you for them or he owes you the money, then you can keep track of that and keep track of those um, incidents of contempt with the date and then your proof or um, a, objective, being very objective about this is exactly what happened, not how you feel or anything like that. And that's going to also be uh, in, accepted in court uh, most cases, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but most cases that's going to be go a long way, a lot farther than uh, just going from your head. Um, if you notice from my last video, all three of the toolkits have gotten a beautiful update. Um, and again, those are available on my website at jengrice.com forward slash shop. And back to the beginning where we started about this, this is all about what's in the best uh, interest of the children, because that's what the courts want for your child and that's what you should want for your child. So I also included that in the front of this toolkit so that you can write it down and remind yourself what is the best for the child. And if you can show that in the court, I believe that um, you can keep custody of your child even if you were uh, married to a narcissist, divorcing a narcissist, or battling child custody with a narcissist to keep showing that you in fact are what's in the best interest of the child. And lastly, I'll just say, having a child custody binder to take with you to court will give you confidence, as well as you'll be organized and show the court that, look, I have my act together. I have all of my ducks in a row, and I am prepared to show you that I am in the best interest um, for this child. You have the documentation handy, you can just pull it out when you need to. You're not fumbling through papers and packets and uh, envelopes full of stuff you know right where it's at because you have everything tabbed and ready in its proper place. So I hope this video is helpful to you. If you have any questions, 
um, you can contact me at the link below or leave a comment. Uh, feel free to subscribe, especially to my newsletter at jengrice.com. I'll leave a link at the end. Um, and you can always email me back on any of the emails I send you. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next video.